Hi guys, I'm Shmi. Hello and welcome back to the channel where you join me for a very exciting day. I'm here at the Barn Miami, surrounded by a rather eclectic mix of cars that we're going to be taking a look around, but primarily to visit and take a look at this the Pininfarina Sergio. It is one of the rarest Ferrari models ever made. There are only six of them in the entire world and incredibly valuable as a result. And today, I'm going to be lucky enough to take this for a first drive to have a bit of an experience and what it's like driving the last ever Ferrari to feature a naturally aspirated V8 as it happens, based on the 458 Speciale platform. We will take a full look around because as I said, there aren't many places where you have the likes of a 300 SL Gullwing and a Ferrari 250 Lusso alongside so many other different cars, the Beetle Jolly, for example, an 80s Range Rover, and then the Ferrari Sergio, the Pininfarina Sergio, a special car wearing Sergio's name as a tribute after 40 years as chairman of the company, and a car with so many details to explore up close. A car that I have seen before with its previous owner in his collection, but it's now here in Florida, and today I can't believe I'm here at the Barn Miami to experience what it's like. <music> Let's have a quick look at this, but there's so much to explore here at the Bard Miami. I want to take you for a full tour of this room and also the room alongside, but this is a truly special car. The color is called Azuro Lolo. It is very similar though to Blue Electrico, which is the color of my soon to be arriving Ferrari SF90 Stradale. But as you look around, you can tell it's based on the 458 platform. In fact, originally when they presented the concept for the Sergio, it was completely windscreenless. It was an open front end with a virtual windshield akin to how they've done it on the Monza more recently. But in the case of this, they did go on to bring it into production in 2014. They launched it, announced they would be making six cars for specially picked Ferrari customers, three of which are here in the United States of America. And as I said, this is a car that I have actually seen in the past. A couple of years ago, I saw it in the collection of its first owner. But it's a car with so many details that you start to take in when you're looking at it more closely. It's permanently open. There's no roof panel, as you can see, very cleanly presented. This almost aerodynamic spoiler you could say over the top behind the seats but we'll go through some of the inspirations and elements in a moment beforehand feast your eyes around the collection here at the barn miami we have the likes of a beautiful 1956 300 sl gullwing alongside a 60s 250 gt lusso two spectacular cars we have a very nice f355 in blue potsy a color that certainly stands out to me we've got an old alpha 8c recreation we've got a few different cars in storage and things we've got a uh, e-type series Three. We've got the RS200, we've got a few different generations of 911s, we've got a 512BB sitting along or above, I should say, a 308 Dino, a very, very highly spec 992 uh, Carrera 4S, one of the original Shelby uh, Eleanors, that's actually one of the 15, I think they made convertible cars, signed by Carol Shelby. We've got a very low mileage uh, De Tomaso Pantera above a 575 Super America. This is actually a more recent creation based on the Beetle, but the Jolly VW actually made a concept of that, but never put it into production. So those are pretty rare as a result. We've got a 70s 911 Resto Mod beneath the three-door Range Rover from the 80s above come through there are some bikes around as well two very different mercedes alongside one another this is what batman would have driven in the 30s if he had a car an ssk i think it's called the count trossi it's a recreation one of three recreations that were made but looks insane alongside a new g63 but the display continues super rare alpha 4c italia they only made a handful of those the convertibles um, we've got a few lovely old alphas as well speedster another beetle there's a heavily modified uh, Abarth just tucked in there, F8 Spider up top, lovely little Julia Sprint, uh, we've got the uh, Alpha Spider alongside, a Charger here, little MGA, Mercury up top, Defender 110, um, that's from an uh, Arconic full body conversion uh, update and another Range Rover as well. So some very, very cool cars around at the moment, a completely unusual mix. In fact, I don't think I've seen many places with a mix quite as varied as this. I mean, the two Mercs alongside one another here could not be more different cars, however hard you tried. But let's come back over to the Sergio and start looking at this a little bit more closely in this amazing venue. Look, the lounge is upstairs, nice chill out area. Wonderful setup they have here at the barn with the cars up on the racks like we have at the Schmuseum. But to dig more into this, this is what we need to talk about. 
as I said, with so few of these in existence, it's really pretty rare to see a Sergio. Although I think now with all of my travels across the automotive world, the various different collections I've visited and the many different events that I've attended, out of the six of them in total, I've actually now seen five of them, which is really quite incredible. I like to check on exclusive car registry where you can see the cars, the different specs, where exactly they are, and worked out I've seen five of the six, but never have I previously had the opportunity to experience it and to share that with you. So a huge thanks to both the Barn Miami and also to the owner for making today possible. As we take a better look at it though, to go through some of the design details, both Ferrari and Pininfarina are two of the most famous names in the Italian automotive industry. They worked together for many, many years Years, although this was one of the last projects that they did collaboratively, one of the last cars that they actually designed together before Ferrari brought the design process in-house. And there are some amazing details, lots of traditional details as well. For example, on the rear deck here, and we'll open it up and have a look at the engine in a moment, you have these distinctive circles for cooling, but also reminiscent of the Ferrari Modulo concept. We've got a specific set of wheels made for the car, the 21-inch wheels, finished in the dual tone of the gold and the diamond turned face contrast against the paintwork but a specific set for the Sergio and then the most famous design element I think for this car is this full width strip around the front this iconic face almost that Pininfarina Automobili now use on the Batista, their full EV hypercar, a different design but variation thereof. And this is obviously an LED headlight. But when they initially introduced the concept without the windshield, the idea was that it could go into production based on a 458 Spider. They used replacement body panels from carbon fiber, saving a lot of weight, in fact, 330 pounds, so almost 150 kilos taken out of the 458 Spider by taking away the windshield, taking away the roof and the folding mechanism and using the carbon fiber panels as a result. But of course, to go into production, the windshield was added back in. And by completing this central section in satin black and the frame of the glass as well, it still gives it that silhouette of being very, very open. There's no roof. It's a completely bespoke body for this car. And as I said, there are other design elements. For example, when you look here, you've got the quarter window. So when you have the side glass up, you have this kind of cut off look. The openings here for the cooling that come in and work seamlessly with that integrated loop around the very back of the car. I love the floating Cavallino, the prancing horse that you have in the center. And the color of this car suits these shapes and curves so very well. Down towards the back, you've got that central reversing light Formula One style with the twin tailpipes, one on each side. You can see the fins of the diffuser down below very much based on the Speciale, which arrived in the interim before the production version of this was initially presented. If we have a look at the inside, it's finished, of course, with a bespoke level of detail to match the exterior, the black leather and Alcantara with the perforations, the pinstripe, the Sergio embroidery with the Cavallino and the headrest, Alcantara steering wheel with the satin paint finish. You've even got the colored details on some of the selectors that you have in the center. I promised we'd have a look at the engine bay. So let's pop this open and come around towards the back where we have the 4.5 liter naturally aspirated V8, beautifully presented mid engine position, obviously rear driven, seven speed dual clutch gearbox. This makes 605 horsepower, revs to 9,000 RPM. It is a masterpiece. And one of the reasons why to this day, Speciales are holding value, perhaps even better so than Pistas, the technical replacement, you could say. This with the limited number of them and the significance of that engine is no doubt going to be really a truly spectacular thing for the future. Let's close this back down, obviously very light as well. Click it into place. A few more things that we can talk about when we return a little bit later, but I can spot the key. I think it's probably time to take a seat inside and get this ready because we'll be heading out. Oh look, even the blue central surround of the yellow rev counter to go and experience what this car is like. The Pininfarina Sergio, Ferrari Sergio, one of only six in the world. All right, let's get the car outside, get ready to experience this. Right, familiar in many ways, into gear, we have the lovely Ferrari shift paddles. Obviously the 458 is one of the best cars that I think Ferrari have made. The first ever video on my YouTube channel was a regular 458 Italia. That is kind of where Shmi 150 began. This is not just a 458, obviously. This is something completely extraordinary in comparison. But in terms of familiarity, while well, we get started, auto, obviously the valve V8 behind. So not too much noise from that initially, just as we head out and start to get a little feel 
Right, there we go, that sounds good. Such a distinctive sound from this engine. One of the greatest engines, obviously the twin turbo generation engines that have arrived now give more power, give more torque, are significantly faster. But driving in here, roof down, permanently open, an unusual view, in fact, through the rear view mirror, looking under that flying buttress sitting behind me. Um, obviously, we're in sport mode. You've got wet where you can soften things up. You can press bumpy road mode as well if you want to make the suspension even softer. But it's not exactly an uncomfortable car to begin with. I'm just obviously conscious of the value, the rarity, what exactly it is that I am currently driving here in Miami. So if I were to press the auto button, it then goes into manual and you can drive on the shift paddles and it will hold in manual as we've come to know from so many cars. Oh, that noise. It's very much linked to the throttle pedal press and it feels quite strange because it is usable, approachable. This isn't daunting or necessarily crazy, scary or dramatic. It actually feels I suppose quite familiar and easy enough to drive and fairly regular with the added bonus of the fact that it is from the very fine world of coach building and Pininfarina. Gosh, it's special to be at the wheel of this car. The massive smiles commence. So we've got the indicators on the steering wheel, always takes a little bit of getting used to but permanently open. There's always something different about driving a car that's a fixed barquetta. You know, you can't just fold up a roof. It's always going to be the open driving experience as opposed to convertibles. They just feel different. They look so much more, I suppose, stylish without having to deal with the constraints of design to have a folding roof mechanism to fit different shapes and the impact that that would then have on airflow around the car effectively. Obviously just driving pretty gently considering the uh, car that I'm at the wheel of right now. Obviously we do have the Manatino. Uh, we can pop that into race, which will sharpen the shifts a little bit. Um, changes the suspension setup, changes the traction and all of the other systems, computers and controls and everything that the car is working so cleverly on in the background. And should I suppose liven up the sound even more as well? Yes, yeah, so listen to that. without even having to accelerate hard. It just sounds so sweet. Obviously turbos mute that sound while the 488 GTB, the Pista, the F8 are wonderful cars to drive. They just don't have that sharpness of the tone that you get out of this. Oh, that's fantastic. I mean, there's a reason that everything in this segment is a quickly appreciating in value, right? Because we don't have these things in the future. You can't have this sense of emotion of the orchestra of an engine like this. And every kind of acceleration away from a traffic light is something I'm looking forward to right now as the road opens up a touch. Oh, fantastic, absolutely fantastic. And those unusual sounds on the shift. I'm just blown away by how approachable it is. This doesn't feel crazy daunting or overwhelming. I'd want a daily one. If I had a Sergio, I would be driving it all the time. Pure smiles. Wow. What an awesome sound. Obviously conscious that on the video you'll be hearing the wind noise having the roof down, but that's obviously the only option in the case of this. Just going through the gearbox a little bit. The shifts. These were the early days of dual clutch transmissions, but obviously Ferrari, like so many other things, have done it well. And even now, you know, technically we're 12 years on from the arrival of the 458 Italia. Even this car was presented back in 2014. It's now, believe it or not, eight years ago. It certainly makes me feel a little bit older in the world of automotive. I remember yesterday filming the, well, the concept nine years ago at the Geneva Auto Show, followed by the production car the following year. I'm driving it now, 
I'm just mesmerized by how civilized it is. That's the major takeaway for me now. Perhaps, I mean, the Speciale always was as well. Obviously, modern cars now, when they make them extreme for track, are really extreme for track. But this does feel a touch lighter and you know, more nimble. I have not driven the Speciale for a few years. Just obviously conscious that it's significantly lighter than the standard car. Definition of coach building. Pin and Farina car, only for VIP Ferrari customers, and that's why, you know, there are three here in the US, like one in Japan, at least one in Europe, but not exactly many of them around the world. And this particularly stunning one of all of the cars, this is my favorite, and here we are. What a color, it's so similar to the color of the SF90 that I've gone for. Yeah, just open to the uh, truck alongside and then back on the throttle. Awesome, so good. Wow, 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 wow the sound obviously there's no window behind us there's nothing it's all open it just gives you that experience and in the sunshine here in Florida this could not get any better such a cool unique car I mean obviously it's not like the Monza with no windshield at all so you don't have that feeling in your face you don't need to wear a helmet or something to stop stones flying up and pinging off your off your nose and in, literally in your eyes it's a car that obviously needs the right environment to drive it, you're not going to drive something like this every day as much as I say I would love to do so, but for a special occasion, just, I mean, yeah, what more can I really say, you know, it's, I think it's, it speaks for itself really, Sergio, just, yeah, timeless, just going up through the revs, <laughs> with the plane right in front. Awesome experience. Obviously, not a crazy level of power by the standards of some cars these days, just over 600 horsepower, but not exactly lacking either. It sort of have plenty for what you could ever realistically want to do. And then, on the other hand, obviously, pop it back into auto, pop it even all the way down into wet, and valves close, goes up seventh gear or sixth at the moment. Super quiet, super chill. Unusual design of the mirrors, noticing looking around as well. Like I say, this rear view mirror that you almost feel like there's, you know, no flying buttress behind you. You're looking pretty much underneath it. <laughs> no, I don't like it like this. I want it back in a manual. And um, just to drop the gears. You can obviously pull the exhaust valve and have it like that all the time. Sadly, the future won't have too much of it. Now, Miami is not exactly famed for incredible driving roads, so you have to bear with me here. We are in the city, effectively. We're surrounded by some lovely palm trees and feeling the good vibes, but we're not going to be hooning it. Oh, so we've got a bit of a bump here. Slow down for that. Yeah, nicely does it. A bit more of that. Just a car that even at sensible speed you have quite a lot of fun with. It feels good, it feels nice, it feels, you know, how do I describe it? Just exciting, just... Listen to that. I suppose one of the funny things about the Sergio though is when you're driving it through you know, a high street like this, most people wouldn't have a clue what this is. It's clearly Ferrari, there's a Ferrari badge and it's the right proportions, but Unless you actually knew the specifics, you would look at this a little bit perplexed and confused by the car and probably have no, I would say, understanding or appreciation for the value and significance of it. As I said, one of the last Pininfarina Ferraris, the last Ferrari NAV8, I mean, many people say that's the Speciale or the Speciale Aperta, but this technically came after. It is literally the last one, the end. And will we ever see another one? Maybe something with hybrid assistance, but it doesn't seem particularly likely. And if so, 
if these are not forgotten, I certainly hope they're not forgotten, then there will always be, I think, something very special about it, around it. Let's make our way gently through town here. Even in first gear in race, just getting that little kind of flutter of the V8 teasing. We I mean, can take it all the way up to 9,000 RPM, but nowhere here can we take it up to 9,000 RPM for obvious reasons, not to mention the value and being careful, obviously. Just, I mean, like Ferrari do so well, it's an exciting car, whatever you do. Pinpoint sharp, you feel exactly what the steering is going to do and puts the car exactly where you want it. I know, I know this isn't kind of on the track at extremes, but you get that sense straight away and you still feel that obviously through the modern Ferraris despite electric steering as opposed to good old fashioned, let's say proper steering. Regardless, it is a wonderful, wonderful thing to drive. And this is a really special opportunity to experience it. Alas, for now though, we're coming towards the end of the drive in this car. But what a short little drive it has been. I know not the craziest in the world, but special, however you look at it. Look at this. Wow, that sounded good. The paint color and the sunshine is glorious. Outside here at the barn. Look at that. It is truly, truly, truly beautiful. Wow. <laughs> I love it. Really, really interesting experience with the Sergio. Pop it back inside. There's also a new arrival, by the way, alongside. 550 Barquetta. Right. Head inside. Some trucks outside with the noise in the background. It seems that there are always interesting cars arriving at the Barn Miami, but it's actually quite appropriate to have the 550 Barquetta and the Sergio alongside one another. Although it's a supercar with a mid-engined V8 and that's a Gran Toro with a V12 up front, they are both effectively permanently open. And I say effectively because the 550 Barquetta did actually come with a folding ragtop contraption that you can install in basically emergency circumstances that attaches to the top of the windshield and goes over the roll hoops, but it's not exactly sightly and basically the car is best kept like this where it looks stunning. I've always been a big fan of the open front engine V12 Grand Tourers that Ferrari make, the likes of the SA Aperta, the F60 America, the 812 GTS, and both of these, the 550 Barquetta and the 575 Super America with the large folding glass panel for the roof. So that's the, I suppose, kind of comparison between those two, but looking at this under the lights, it does look amazing. The Sergio is super rare and quite a fascinating driving experience. I didn't expect it to feel, I suppose, so close to the 458, and perhaps when you consider the price differences, you could argue that wouldn't necessarily be fully justified, but then you get onto the fact that there are only six of these. It's the last. This is going to be immensely valuable in the future. It's already very valuable, millions of dollars we're talking for something like this. And you can see why. It's a coach-built carbon fiber bodywork in a permanently open car, one of the first of these kind of things really to ever exist. There's more to it that we haven't yet taken a full look at, you know, around the interior. You have those digital displays in front of the driver. It's based around quite an open feeling, really, down inside here. I do want to pop open the front quickly, if I can reach down, hit the button just there, open that up. Inside, swathed with Alcantara and leather. Notice the blue grab handle over on the passenger door. The driver door doesn't have that. I suppose it would get slightly in the way of the steering wheel. And a few other things, there's a plaque uh, just behind that tells you out of the six cars, it's believed that this is the last of the six to have been made in total. I mean, each of them has a special story. I think there are a couple of red ones, yellow, silver, and blue that we're looking at here. Up front, if we just open this, if I can find the catch, pop that open. We've got the usual Ferrari supplied emergency kit, tool kit, just nicely presented. We've got the car cover, but the boot actually goes right down, or the hood space actually goes right down to the bottom inside there as well all super light body panels and components in the car. And I want to show you very quickly, the color is called Azuro Lolo, which was the name of the daughter of the first owner. In fact, as I uh, have seen that very sticker, 
in the past when I saw this car out in California. Today though, to drive it has been something else. I think that's one of the most insane things for me is to be able to experience something that special, like it or not, understand it or not, is almost irrelevant in this circumstance because this is a period of automotive engineering, coach building, design, and special engines that will forever be remembered, especially for people like me. You know, the 458 Italia is where things started for Shmi 150. This is, you could argue, the very fine ultimate, final ultimate special in some ways of that. I do also quite like looking at this in this color, so similar to the SF90 with the dark blue back there. A pair of Ferraris and that color combination in the garage would look really very nice. One to think about and watch for the space in the future. Today though, what an awesome collection here at the Barn Miami. What an amazing mix of cars and a lovely venue as well with the upstairs lounge with all the pictures and artworks and things that they've got going on here. And some of the finest collectible cars, each with special stories, you know, low mileage Pantera, one of 15 uh, of the Eleanor. I think this is actually a manual Super America, by the way. One of, I believe it's 17 manuals, something along those lines. If I just squeeze past and we have a look. Yep, gated shifter with a V12. Yes, please. Like that, an awful lot. So a very, very special car that they have lurking inside here alongside many others as well. So do check out The Barn Miami. Check out their YouTube channel as well to see what the guys are up to in some of the videos with the cars, these fine cars that they have coming through. And also check out their social media pages, which I'll pop down below as well. Today's been really awesome though. A huge thanks again to the team here, to the owner of the Sergio. Wow, really special. And thank you, of course, as always, to you guys for watching. I couldn't do it without your support, so I appreciate it an awful lot. That's it for now though. Thanks for watching and I'll see you again very soon. Cheers.